Hey train friends, welcome back to the Pittsburgh Industrial Railroad in the Horseshoe Curve. It's Thursday, happy train day. And uh, I've got a special video. Let's see if I can adjust the camera here. Sorry, get myself in the in the in the frame. Alright, so thanks for joining in today. Uh, if you couldn't tell by the uh, the title on the video, got a special box here to open up. I figure we'll do it all together and have fun today. Run some trains. And um, let me just check out if I can get into this uh, into YouTube on my app. On my iPad, I mean. Hey, Brian, how you doing today? Give me one second here. Hope everybody's uh, well and healthy out there. Uh, hey, Aiden. Brian's Brian says you he uh, you really like the K four. Yeah, that's the um, the thirteen sixty one sitting over there to the right. And uh, these are some curve curve uh, beer reefer cars and some like Heinz cars that I had on the layout on. Um, it was uh, Saturday. Or Sunday last week. So, everybody who's who's uh, who's joined in in the recent live sessions, I appreciate it. Um, it's been fun. I figured, you know, it's, while we have a little time to do this, it's uh, you know, it's it's fun to do on you know weekly basis. So I'm gonna try to do every Thursday around you know four or five ish, and then we're doing Sundays at three p.m. So if you miss this session and you're watching it on the uh, the rerun, you can always catch us live on day. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, also, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. We appreciate it. And uh, hit the like button. So my iPad right now is lagging out real bad. So I don't know what the deal is with it. Every time that we do the live shows, I have, I have problems with it. All right. So Randy Jacobs is here. Jim Rosswog's here. How you guys doing? D. Klinger, Matt's Trains. Hey, Matt, how you doing? So I appreciate you guys uh, stopping in today to, to watch the uh, the video. Looks like we got uh, a nice amount of people joining in right now. Pensy Productions is here. Luca, hey, guys, how you doing? So I figured it would be fun to do uh, an unboxing video, keep it kind of a surprise, do it all together, make it fun. Um, hey, Patrick, how you doing today? Devon, how you doing? All right, so uh, we'll start. Looks like we got a pretty good following here, so we might as well get this this part started here. Hey, Bill. All right, so here's our box, and um, I figured it would be cool to just uh, do it here in the curve. I put a little table up so I could open the box here. Hang on one second. I gotta kill the volume on the iPad. It's like an echo in my background. <laughs> All right, all right. So, what do you guys think's in the box? Is in the box here? Take a wild guess. Is any, can anybody guess? It's gonna be a tough one. No, yeah, there's new locomotive. <laughs> Mother's Day gift. No, not this one. <laughs> Hers will be next week. <laughs> It's it's probably not going to be anything you guys are going to guess just because it's it's um it's not a new release it's a new engine um, it's brand new in the box but it's not a new release so it's you know it's it's going to be fun somebody says vision challenger that'd be awesome <laughs> all right so I don't I don't particularly like doing these unboxing videos but I figured what the hell I might as well you know have fun today and, and share a little excitement so. I already kind of cracked this open to begin with, so I just stuck a piece of tape on it to kind of hold it shut for now. Um, any any other guesses? Matt's train says something pensy. Brian Byrne says it's PRR. <laughs> a decapod would be sick. I have been looking at, at possibly getting a decapod. I, I'd always like to have one of those. 
So, hey, you never know, this could be it. Um, all right, so without making you guys wait any longer here, let's, let's get the show going. Kind of keep the box at a specific angle so you don't see what it is. <laughs> All right, so it's the the orange and blue box as you can see. So you know that much so far. Let's see what you guys are saying here, real quick. <laughs> NS3, oh no. <laughs> J1A, BNSF. <laughs> I have a J1A, so I, I wouldn't get a new another J1A. I'll, I'll tell you that this is not a J1A. So this engine came out um, several years back, and I never picked it up. But I saw it on eBay, and I figured um, it was a good a good buy. I've never opened up a train here, so <laughs> sorry. If it's it's not going as easy as I thought it would. All right, so all right, we got that part off. <laughs> we'll set that aside. All right, any uh, any last and final guesses here? Brian says the second one, M1, don't drop it, <laughs> H9, uh, no, there's, you guys got some good guesses, that's for sure, all right, so, crack it open, and you still really can't tell what it is, but maybe you can kind of see it a little bit. All right, so. It is the, the Tuscan Legacy K4. What do you guys think? I think it's pretty awesome. So um, that was one reason why I stuck the the K4 on the track, the uh, the 1361. I figured today we could do uh, all the K4s, and I figured at the same time we could also do uh, kind of a how-to video on you know what you do when you first take an engine out of the box. We'll put it on the tracks, we'll program it, and we'll get it running. So um, this is a, a full-scale Lino Legacy. So first thing you want to do is obviously you want to take out these uh, you know, protectors here. And uh, while we have the engine off the track, if you flip it over here, you'll see the, uh, the program switches are on the underside of the cab. And we want to turn it right here to program. All right, so there's our, our on the track over here. And then here's our tender. That's pretty sweet. It's got this nice square unique logo around the, the Pennsylvania name. So we'll go ahead and remove these inserts. Here's a shot at the back of it. See what you guys are saying about it. Cool, yeah, second K4, yeah. <laughs> so this um this this Tuscan K4 is very controversial. Um, when it first came out, I thought that it was a one of those what if paint schemes. And then I realized, uh, just recently actually, I never even realized it, but there supposedly is a story that uh, there was somewhere in a, a neighborhood of like 10 K4s that might have been painted Tuscan. 
Um, according to some historians, that there there were about ten. There, they have a specific range of cab numbers that were Tuscan. Uh, there's some disagreements with those claims, and uh, the other claims are that there was maybe at least one engine that was painted Tuscan. So there, uh, there's a couple photos out there that where the the engine matched the the passenger car I knew were Tuscan. And it was in black and white, so it was very hard to tell. But in the black and white photos, they looked like they were Tuscan. Um, so we're pretty much almost certain that there was at least one K4 that was painted Tuscan, and it was called the Red Arrow. Uh, the main service was from New York to Pittsburgh and then onward to Chicago. So uh, one of the things before you want to uh, run your engine is you want to have some, uh, some oil handy. And you want to oil the points around the um, the pickup and where the pivot points are on the rollers. I'm just doing that now on this on this tender. And then you also want to get around where the wheels pivot. I do that real quick too. All right, I think I may have got that roller twice, but anyways, here's your IR sensor. So this engine's, uh, I mean, so the tender itself is ready to go. And uh, let me grab the, the engine again. So anyways, I thought this was a good conversation piece to own. Um, also, it's, it's different than everything else in my Pensy collection. Um, there's hardly any other steamers that are anything other than just like the dark Brunswick green. So this is kind of a good, um, you know, change of, change of pace. So again, I'm, I'm hitting the, the outside of these, uh, these wheels, the pickup rollers and the, the points where they pivot here, a little bit of oil. And then some more over here. All right. So that's pretty much good. To go. All right. I'll set that there. All right, so um, the next thing you want to do with these is obviously fill the smoke fluid. Um, I'm using the the JT Mega Steam. So um, usually what you'll want to do is about a, a, a half of one of these eyedroppers. If, uh, if you don't have something that's at least as narrow as this, um, Lionel does provide you with most of the engines come with these now, but these are pretty cheap. Um, usually you just want to get like, you can even buy eyedroppers that have a real thin point on them. There's also a funnel that you can use that they give you. I don't, I hardly ever use those two things, like barely ever. Um, I just get this down in, in the smoke unit as far as it can go. Um, I'll go ahead and do that now. So pretty much, um, I, I might do a little more than a half an eyedropper, probably about three quarters of an eyedropper. And then uh, the, the, this engine does have whistle smoke, and it's right here. Uh, this dome lifts off. It's magnetic. It's kind of hard to do when it's, I'm holding it with two hands. Usually you would do this when the engine's on the track. But here's where you fill the smoke for the smoke fluid in this particular engine. A lot of the other engines have whistles that are um, located up in the front of the boiler, so you only load the smoke in the stack and then it, it fills both smoke units. This one, it's separate. So I'll go ahead and get that again. All right, so this engine's ready to go now. We got the, the fluid in it. It's all oiled up, ready to go. Get our, uh, our little sand dome put back on here. And uh, I apologize, I, I'm not able to, to see your comments right now, I'm trying to Get this engine all going. I'll, I'll I'll take a look back here in a second. All right, so I'm gonna move the the camera now. All right, so we got the the engine on the track right over here. Give me just one second to adjust the the camera angle. All right, guys. Thanks for everybody who's joined in today. I appreciate it. Okay. 
All right, so we got our, our K4 there ready to go. Uh, the only thing is I didn't connect the, the tender yet. All right, so if you remember, we put it on uh, program. So right now it's, it's, uh, it's on program. Somebody says, I'm, since train says I'm ready for a streamlined K4. Yeah, that'd be awesome to have. I've seen those. I've been kind of eyeing those up too. The, uh, the PS3 torpedo. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, Warbonnet Productions asks uh, where I get most of my trains. I get a lot of the trains um, from different places. Usually I just try to kind of just snoop around and see where who's got a good deal. Um, I, I, I go with eBay sometimes even. Um, so that's also not a bad option. Um, all right, so engine's ready to go. You want to turn on your track power, which I just did. As you can see, the semaphore just moved. All right, so the first thing you'll do in your, uh, is turn on your legacy remote. And I'm going to set this as engine number nine. So you'll press set or uh, engine nine, and then you hit set. All right, so that's ready to go. Just have to turn the track power back off now. Take the engine back off the track. Flip this switch, if you can see it right there, to run. Make sure everything's on the track well. All right. And um, this engine is equipped with the, the IR sensor. And um, you could run this over a, um, a sensor track and it would load the info into your legacy remote. Um, or you could use the, um, the orange uh, legacy module. And I'll just do that just for the demonstration purposes. Um, a lot of the new engines I don't believe even come with the, 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 the new orange modules. Uh, I'm sorry, the new engines come with orange modules anymore, but um, some of them may... Um, if you do get one, this is how you load it um, in the back of your legacy controller. You just remove this and you pop this in. Um, so we have to turn the track power back on. All right, track power is on. All right, so... Um, this engine, um, you just put the uh, orange module in, load the data. Yeah, I'm going to say yes. And that's as easy as that. But yes, um, yeah, I had a funny feeling they got rid of the orange modules. But for people who don't, who buy maybe a, an older engine that has an orange module, that's how you program it uh, into your remote. So that all the info is in here now. You can see it says Pennsylvania K4. It was uh, 5409. So it's ready to go, and uh, let's get it started up. Dispatcher here, do you copy? Over. Right to meet you. Over. Please start her up and stand by for track orders. Roger that. Ready to move. Out. Hello to everybody who's uh, who stopped in while I was doing the unboxing. I appreciate you uh, watching today, enjoying to run some trains. All right, so over here to my right, I had uh, had some cars ready to go. Um, Dan, I don't know why they got rid of the orange modules. I think because basically all the engines now have the the IR sensor, and they're trying to to push the. Um, the sensor tracks and the use of you know, their Bluetooth system, so which isn't a bad thing. It's probably a way to you know save on cost too. Real quickly, a couple other things you'll find in the box are this tool. This is for removing the screws on the side rods if you need to change the traction tire. Which here's your traction tires here, and then this engine is also um, capable of. 
uh, having a, uh, a dummy coupler put onto it, a, you know, no gauge coupler rather than a scale coupler, which is on here now. So it'd be kind of cool to do that one day, put this on it and, you know, double head it with the 1361. So right now I'm just trying to, I'm going to pack up this box as we talk. Um, I'll run through some of the, the sound sequence on the engine here. I got slightly off topic here. I had, I was going to say that I had, um, I had some cars ready to go over here around the bend with the, uh, for the K4, with the Tuscan K4. It's K4 day. <laughs> All right. So I'm pretty, pretty well cleaned up here now for the most part in this room. So Give me just one one minute here. All right, so we got some some heavy weights to pull behind the the K four. All right, let's, um, let me ask you guys a question here real quick and I'll get you a couple close up views of the engine. I'm gonna take this, the, my phone off the tripod for a second. All right, so let's take a look at it up close. I think this is, this engine's a lot nicer in person than it looked in, in the, uh, in the photographs online. Pretty, pretty nice looking engine. Um, all right, so one question I had, I want to see what you guys think real quick. The, um, the question I, I wanted to ask was, should I paint the, the drive wheels gold i have a gold paint pen i could do like the the spokes in gold and i saw that uh, another another person on youtube did that and it looked pretty cool um so it's just like a gold paint pen i think it would kind of like make it pop and it would match the um the lettering and uh, i didn't want to do it until i just kind of ran it and you know get, get used to it and see if i even want to do that or not but i think it would look kind of cool So it looks like you guys are, are liking the idea for the, the gold spoke. So maybe that'll be something I can do. All right, so let's get the uh, smoke unit turned on here for a second. Give me one second, I'm trying to, I'm gonna put my phone on this, this little tripod holder I have. like a little mini mini tripod there's a good angle all right Looks like our smoke units need to warm up a little bit.
Let's even get a, uh, a, a better shot of the whistle steam here. Trying to let it warm up for a second. Yeah, I'm not going to run this, the smoke too much. <laughs> All right, so let's get this train rolling out here and uh, check it out with the uh, the other K4. I got to turn on this engine first because it's it's in the way. It's ahead of the um, the Tuscan K4. So here's the uh, the 1361. Same whistle, but it's a great one, so I don't have any problem with that. If you guys had a specific question that I missed before while I was getting this engine set up, feel free to ask it at any, any time. Um, I like to answer questions as we run trains. Now I can see the questions popping up here on my screen as I, I run the trains. All right, so we're ready to go here. Um, Ultra Trains asks, which company of locomotives do I prefer, Lionel or MTH? I'm, I'm kind of a Lionel fan. But um, I do like MTH engines as well, um, for mainly different reasons. But um, I just prefer Lionel over MTH. I just I like the legacy system and the, and the controller for it. There's the bell. I would love, um, I'd like Lionel to make a, a scale Pennsylvania T1, but that's, I'm probably dreaming with that request. I did get this engine off of eBay. I saw um, some somebody asked me that. Matches our, our heavyweights really well.
All right, guys. Well, I appreciate everybody for joining in today. We'll continue running trains here for a little while. Yeah, I thought there was like a um, that lawsuit thing that happened, and the um, the T one was, I think, at the T one and the and the S S one duplexes were part of that lawsuit. So I don't think we're going to be seeing those uh, scale from Lionel anytime soon, but. Will Will says the the first seating is open in the dining car and he's hungry. <laughs> there was a lawsuit a long time ago. Um, I don't know the details of it. I'm not very knowledgeable of what happened, but MTH sued Lionel for basically copyright use of some certain engines and different molds that they had, saying that they were infringement of molds that they had for their engines, I guess. One eight hundred Clyde. I like the new name. Hey Clyde, thanks for stopping by. Have fun. Have a good evening. Uh, Russell Russell Coons asked if I what I like more, steam engines or diesels. That's a really tough question. Um, I'd say if I if I had to only pick one, I'd pick steam engines. But um, I definitely like diesels as well. So that's kind of why I do both. We're waiting for that Tuscan K4 to come back here to the curve. Since how I feel about a brass hybrid, that'd be pretty awesome. Adam asked, "What if I if I know what um, what year this K4 from is from? Which catalog? I could look it up real quick on my iPad while we're talking." Here comes the uh, the Tuscan K4 now. I really like the marker lights on this engine. Still open, Will. All right, so here's the the info from from Lionel. So you hear it even it gives you a little history, fact or fantasy, and it, it it gives you that story basically that I briefly described about whether or not this is a real paint scheme or not. Um, but to answer the question here, this is from the 2013 signature edition. Here's the info here at the bottom of the screen. Uh, but this engine was new in the box, so even though it's a few years old, but
Hey, no problem, Adam. All right, so maybe we'll head over to the um, to the Pittsburgh room real quick. Check out the 1361 coming by here. Sorry about the, the shaky camera. I'm trying to hold a, bunch, a couple things and open the door here. All right, so here's the yard. And there's our Tuscan K4. Let's go over here and get a good shot of it on the bridge. All right, so um, I saw that uh, Reading Area Rail fan asked about my NSGP35 if I'd sell that. I don't have that engine anymore. I sold it a long time ago, actually. Um, but that's a he heck of an engine. Um, Will said he's been watching a lot of videos, changing out bulbs of LEDs. You know that's actually a really good good. Uh, you brought, that's funny that you met, brought that up, Will, because I was just going to talk about something about that. Um, I have in the um, American Power and Light Company my this Gen Set Switcher, it's a Vision line. The um, anyways, I was saying I have the NS Gen Set Switcher on the inner loop, and the uh, the slots are. In need of replacement on it. I think that engine looks great. Something different.
Hey, you were supposed to fix that sign. See I'm saying? The ditch lights aren't working on this. And it's not because they're turned off. They're just not working. As you can see here, let's stop it for a second. Rear ditch lights work. So I'll take a second to um, show you guys, if you, if you missed it on Sunday, my, my PTF Designs Building Flats. They're available on my website. It's pghtrainfanatic.com. I also sell on eBay under the username pghtrainfanatic. These are my new trackside flat series. So you got the two switch towers on the left. Got your water tower. A couple of grain elevators. And then also this uh, cool little train station. You can set this up on your wall. Put some passenger figures in front of that. It's got an LED light. So these are pretty cool. These are available now. The, the, um, I still need to list the grain elevators on, on eBay. Um, right now I just have the train station, the switch towers, and the water tower available. Um, these are available. Uh, though, so if you see something you like, just um, shoot me an email. You can always do a, a, a direct order that way. My email is pghtrainfanatic at yahoo.com. And here again is the uh, websites pghtrainfanatic.com. And these are printed on vinyl, half inch thick. They look great on your backdrop. As you can see, I paint the edges to match the print. So if you have any questions, just uh, reach out to me. Definitely appreciate it, guys. So if you guys have been following me, um, the live streams lately, I've been talking about how I'm going to change out the track in this room. I'll be going with Ross track and uh, switches and then some guard graves for the straight sections. So looking forward to doing that soon.
Everything's running nice and smooth today. So um, real quickly, I wanted to talk about this track uh, that I was mentioning that I'm going to be changing out. So um, right in this section here where the single track is, uh, the track is still going to come in off of a switch here. It's going to be 072. And then there's going to be a yard lead here with four spurs um, that come down. These two tracks are going to be closer together. They're going to be over here more so, real close to this uh, cooling tower giving me more room between the, the back part of the layout where these two tracks are, and then they'll be up, the main line will be over here. So my four tracks will run through here. One of them is going to be a dead end when it hits the power plant there with a bumper on it. The second one from the, from the farthest from the back will continue through a curve, through the blast furnace, and back to a switch somewhere in this area which is then going to continue back to the to the inner loop, which the inner loop is not going to be going like this. It's going to come out of a new tunnel here. Um, so there's going to be a spur coming off of here, coming down this way at an angle. Then there's going to be a switch leading into this stall, a, another switch here, and then the track will continue. So the, the, the second switch that's going to be here will also go through the blast furnace. I'm going to try to see if I can if I can fit a curve in and connect it back with the, now what we're talking about is going to be the third the, the third track here and it would continue down to the to the beginning of the, the switch. And then the innermost track here is going to be the most important track because I'm going to explain why. Um, it's going to come off the yard lead. It's going to follow down Pretty much where this dirt path is at and it'll be right in here and there's going to be a switch here that connects it up with that angled track i was talking about and then it, it's also going to be coming to a switch over here which will connect it back to the to the inner loop so in turn you can go through this angled switch send the train around this direction or you could continue this way and send the train around that way. So I can reverse the direction of my trains. Now, another reason why that this track's gonna be important is if you're, say you're headed, the train's heading this direction on it and you're coming down this way, uh, right here where the, yards, where the yard lead is gonna be at, there's gonna be a switch right here, which where you can continue going straight and not go through the yard lead back that way. And that switch is going to come into a curved switch right here. So again, on this side of the layout, if the train is going that way, you can send it clockwise or counterclockwise. So I can double reverse the direction of my trains on this. It's going to be like the yard, the yard lead. So um, that's going to be the main track where the switchers travel on. And then the other tracks are going to be where your the the cars are sitting on. So we'll be able to do some cooperations with that. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. And then I um, I wanted to ask you guys what your opinion is on another idea I have. So um, if you're not familiar, the this is the main line back here, the back the farthest back track, the same one that the trains travel around the layout on. Now the track that's closest to us back there is a bump and go trolley track. All it just does is simply bump there, it goes through and it, into the tunnel and bumps back and that's all it does. Um, so I'm thinking about instead of having the bump and go trolley, I'll throw a switch in right here. You can come out onto this track from the main line. From there, it would be mainly for switchers. You would come this way it would go through the tunnel and it would start to go up an, up an incline inside the tunnel. And then as it goes through an incline and rises up a, a couple inches, it would come out of an elevated track through, the, through an, up, an upper tunnel here. And it would travel across an ore bridge so you could drop off ore from the ore cars down to uh, where the conveyor picks them up to, to go up, up the... Uh, the blast furnace so i thought that'd be kind of cool what do you guys think about that idea uh, 
Um, I mean, it would be you know a dead end track. It'd be kind of cool to just be able to take the switchers up there and have like four or five ore cars and just let them sit there and do uh, different yard operations that way as well. And that's kind of realistic. It's a realistic um, feature of blast furnaces where there's a there's an ore bridge where the the ore cars would be used to be taken up and uh, the ore would drop down and then into a um, I forget what it's called, but then it would take it up the conveyor that dumps it up into there. So, I thought that'd be kind of cool. If you guys um, haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit the like button. As you can see, my crossing signals are not working. Uh, yeah, it's they're they're done for. <laughs> That's something else we're gonna have to replace when we replace the track. We're getting there's some new crossing signals here, some Z stuff signals, maybe the, the operating gates. That'd be awesome. It's just such a it's a tough spot because it's so close to the edge of the layout can bump into them easily. Let's head back over the curve. Check the uh, K4 coming over the stone bridge.
<laughs> Matt, Matt asked what I did to my crossings. They, um, they, they got messed up a while ago whenever Lily was younger and she, she, uh, she kind of, <laughs> I guess took them out. I don't know. <laughs> they got bent. I missed all the comments. I was, they weren't updating on my phone for a while. Now I'm seeing all the, I'm looking back at the comments. I did, I did break some records today. We have, we've been running trains without any, uh, any issues. Steelers fan. Oh, you just got that large Heinz building. Cool. Thanks. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> the Gargraves is definitely not flimsy track. Um, I can tell you that. It's it's very well well made. Patrick asked if I was if it'd be easier for me to buy a new house, <laughs> start from scratch. Yeah, that might be. <laughs> and then Warbonnet Productions asked uh, if you, what what legacy engine to buy. You're, you said you're saving up for an engine. Um, I, I I say I would just you know go with whatever specific road name you you like the most. For your first engine and you know you don't have to always get the the biggest and most expensive one to have just as much fun so keep that in mind hey al thanks for stopping by here's the new uh the new k4 tuscan red Thanks for all the nice compliments, guys. I appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video today. We'll run trains for a little bit longer. And then we'll uh, call it an evening here soon. Hope everybody's well and healthy. Hey, no problem, Matt. K4s are pretty cool, though, but if you get a chance to get one, I would, I'd grab one up. I didn't really care for the long-haul tender K4s. Um, I just, to me, it just seemed like I was buying an engine that I already had, and I know that's probably a major contradiction to the to the Tuscan K4, but the Tuscan K4 is, is just, um, it's pretty neat, and it's it's different. Uh, obviously, there's no other Pensy steamers that look like that, so I thought it was kind of cool to, to add to the collection. Um, but again, yeah, the um, the the long haul tender K4s they're they're a bit overpriced, I think, um, just because of the tender's a little larger, I guess. I got, I don't know. Um, and K4s were the the staple engine of the uh, the Pennsylvania Railroad, so. Never hurts to have have more K fours.
Here comes the 1361. Got our curved beer reefers. I think these are Weaver. <laughs> Jimbo says, didn't I cut the trees down yet? I know. I thought about changing out the, the big trees. But then where would we put the bald eagle? We'll put, put the bald eagle on some little tiny short tree. That's kind of what, what made me change my mind. I was like, oh, no, where's... <laughs> so, I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. Either way, it'd be nice. Kind of like standing at the horseshoe curve watching the trains climb the mountain. A little bit more unique and different on my layout, of course, with the uh, the trees and the MG tower right there. But that's just where I had to, had the, the the space to fit it at. course the tunnel doesn't make sense either but hey it's it's hidden back there see how the tunnel kind of it's hidden <laughs> these are the um lionel heavyweights they came out um pretty pretty well while back probably maybe like 10 years ago and that's the uh the sound car right there Diner sounds car. That's a great question. Now I don't know when the MTH catalog is is dropping. Uh, I'm wondering if they're delaying it because of the current situation. That's a great question. If anybody else know that, I'd like to know too. Maybe we'll make a train stop at our at our little train station here with the the, the Tuscan K4.
Hey Ed, um, send me an email. I, I can't recall why you wouldn't have got that because I sent everybody their prizes. I can tell you that for sure. Uh, my email is pghtrainfanatic at yahoo.com. I, I know I sent that to you. At least I thought I did. <laughs> I mean, I don't have it anymore, so I had to have sent it to you. started out too slow, the K4 was All right, guys, we're going to catch the uh, Tuscan K4 one last time. I'm going to, around the curve, and then I'm going to call it, a, call it a day. And hope you guys have a good evening here. Thanks for everybody who joined in the video today. Um, yes, I'm doing a live show on Sunday at 3 p.m. So if you didn't get enough in today's live stream, come back on Sunday. Uh, I think Sunday is going to be uh, Union Pacific Day. So we'll run all UP trains that day. How's that sound? Something different. But this thing's pretty awesome. Real happy with it. Thanks for uh, for joining in the the show today. Appreciate all the nice compliments and you know, just having fun together, running trains. And uh, we're looking forward to Sunday again. Sunday at three p.m. Live, uh, live here again on the channel. Uh, it'll be Union Pacific Day on Sunday. So I'm sure you can guess what, what engines may be on the track for that day. And if you haven't subscribed and liked already, please do so. I greatly appreciate it. We're trying to get the 10,000 subscribers. Once we hit 10,000, I'm going to do a nice, uh, nice giveaway. I give away a train set so make sure you're you're subscribed if you haven't already and if you have i appreciate it so i'm nick and uh thanks again for watching today guys hope you enjoyed the show have a nice evening we'll see you sunday